My Chidi Q1 Pro has proven it's worth to me. I use this printer all the time, so I think the Q1 deserves a little bit more attention. This printer has a good max speed and good accelerations, but the stock setup for the nozzle is a little bit restrictive. I'd like to just swap it for something that's off the shelf, but it has an unusual nozzle length. So getting a standard CHT from Bontech to fit didn't seem like it would be possible. Well, that's not exactly the case because it actually is with this tiny little threaded insert made by Triangle Labs. So let's get one of these kits mounted and we'll see if it really works and how much of a difference it actually makes. So stick around. Before we dive in, if you haven't caught the 3D printer duct competition videos, I will leave a link up there for anyone interested in competing or following along. YouTube's algorithm did not like that video for some reason, so it did not get the word out quite like I was expecting. So this is the Chidi Q1 Pro, and it is still one of my main go-to printers. And because I'm using this printer so often, I think it's worth a little bit more attention, and I'd like to see if we can upgrade it to get a little bit more out of it. I still have the stock nozzle set up in this printer. I have replaced it only once, wanted to clean the nozzle, and I made the mistake of using an abrasive pad and it rounded over some of the leading edges. So I replaced it to crisp that back up. And it looks like it could probably use a new sock pretty soon as well. Set up in the printer, I have bamboo matte PLA. This is just brown PLA. It's not high speed PLA. And a lot of people have commented that they don't think the high speed PLA is actually worth the extra cost and that it isn't actually any benefit either. So I'm just gonna go with regular PLA and see what kind of results we get. Let me put everything back together. We'll run a test and then we'll switch the nozzle over and then run that same test again and see what kind of performance improvement it provides. I just finished drying the filament and I ran this temperature tower and this filament doesn't seem to be very sensitive to temperature changes. Most of these look very similar, if not the exact same. So I'm gonna stick with the standard 220 for these tests. I have the max flow rate test set up and this one is going from 15 all the way up to 30. I don't think I'm gonna be able to reach the 30 mark, probably not even close, but I thought I should get it high enough just in case. It's all finished and we can see that it was nowhere close to the 30 mark. I'm gonna get this out of here and we'll take some measurements and see what we actually were able to achieve. So we made it to about the 14 millimeter mark before we started to see some defects. So that is gonna be a good benchmark. All right, so this is what Triangle Lab has sent me. They're calling this the ZS V6. This is the plus model. 0.6 millimeter and you can see that there are two pieces. Let's open this up and have a closer look. So this nozzle has the plus feature, which is the CHT style, those three ports, which then funnel down into one. Now the outside is copper and that is nickel plated. And then there's a hardened steel insert, which goes all the way through as well. So that this nozzle is useful for every type of material and it shouldn't wear down for a really long time. The small insert is copper and it is nickel plated, but it has no CHT style interior. So let's go ahead and get that upgrade installed. I've already unloaded the filament. This has been preheated to 220. And for comparison, you can see on the right, we have the Chidi and on the left, the Creality. Slightly different on the threaded section, but the overall length is considerably different. So to get this mounted, I have a two and a half millimeter Allen key. All right, I'm just about ready. We'll just put a bit of glue stick on here again. So I do find that these max flow tests tend to want to come away from the build plate. 
For the last nozzle, we ended at 30, but for this one, I've changed it to 40 just to give it a little bit more headroom. So over on this side here, we're starting to see a little bit of a defect, but I think that's just because down near the bottom, you can see it's starting to lift away from the build plate just a little bit. Now the specs on their website say that this nozzle should be able to get around 40. I am a little skeptical about that. Now I'm just running at 220 degrees. It's possible that it would need to be 230, 240. I'll be impressed if this can reach 40 at 220 degrees Celsius. One minute left. There we have it. I'll let that cool for just a minute and then we'll take a closer look at it. Well, I have to admit, I'm just a little bit impressed. Normally when companies make bold claims like this, that's under certain conditions and you have to meet all of those conditions exactly. But it did seem to finish and I don't see anything close to the defects that we had before. Well, the side did come off and it was wobbling around. Well, not too bad for a first attempt, considering I wasn't even trying to get this to work. I really did not expect it to reach that peak of 40. And you can see here on the front where it became dislodged. And in fact, it did the same on the back. It just did it a little bit later on. But if we look at the very back, the quality isn't too bad. I don't think that these tests are really intended to be this tall. They tend to wobble around quite a bit at the top. So if I were to do this again, I would shorten it up and I would start at 30 and move to 40, for example. Overall, pretty good results though. It's nice to see that some companies tell it like it is and show the real data. I mentioned earlier that quite a few people seem to think that high flow PLA isn't worth it or doesn't provide as much benefit as it should. I found in my testing that there is a little bit of a difference between the Creality High Flow PLA and regular PLA that I've been using, but it makes a lot more sense to swap the nozzle to one like this instead and save the cost on every single spool of filament that we buy. This nozzle should last a very long time because the core is hardened steel and the shell is copper or a copper alloy, so the soft metals won't be taking any of the abuse. Now, if you've tried this nozzle kit as well, let us know in the comments if you've had these same experiences that I have. It might be worth mentioning that this nozzle has a little different shape to the stock version, and that means that when the printer performs the nozzle wiping sequence, it's going to be a little bit louder. Other than that, I haven't had any trouble since installing it. It's just that the steel roller would be guided a little more gradually over the stock version compared to this one, which has this more abrupt transition from the hex to the tip of the nozzle. I've also been printing with quite a bit of the continuous glass fiber filament, and I will have to do more testing on this, but I wonder how the CHT interior with the three ports would affect those continuous strands. This nozzle says it is for all filaments, but it's probably worth taking some time to do a dedicated comparison. So let me know if you'd like to see a video on that. Triangle Labs also sells a version with a sintered polycrystalline diamond, which is supposed to have even better thermal characteristics and should last even longer. It is a little bit pricey, that's an understatement, but it could be worth at least running some tests to see how well it does. So let me know if you'd like to see a video on that one as well. Thanks to my patrons for supporting the channel. And if you're a patron already, consider joining the Discord server if you haven't already, so we can have open conversations about everything 3D printer related. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care and we will see you on the next one.